Hey guys and welcome to today's video where I figured I'd answer some of your questions about feeder insects. So I asked over on Instagram what you'd like to know and I got a lot of questions so I decided to answer the ones that came up the most. Also I am doing a voiceover today. I did try to film this video a couple times and I kept messing up so yeah enjoy the insect clips. Before we get on to the questions though, I thought I'd let you know that I've actually upgraded the Cricket's tank. It is probably too big, maybe too high. They don't really use that much height surprisingly. Um, but if you saw my video about disinfecting a leaf litter and driftwood, then you may have seen that I got this tank along with two pieces of driftwood for a pound, second hand. So I gave it a thorough clean and disinfected it as I don't really know what was previously in there. But yeah, now the crickets actually live in here and it will be interesting to see if they last a bit longer with more room. This actually moves me on to our first question, which was how to house feed insects without getting a critter keeper. So when I hear the name critter keeper, I think of these tiny enclosures with those two black tubes in them. And these are far too small. I don't know really why these are still a thing. Um, and I imagine the crickets will end up either attacking each other and potentially even trying to eat each other because there's just not enough room for them. Now, for crickets, I would suggest a larger one. So, you know, when you go into a shop and you see these little tubs, similar to the turquoise enclosure I previously used, they're advertised for like fish and rodents when fish and rodents should never have to live in anything like this. Um, I do think these can be good for crickets. Now, as for worms, I do have a three-story storage tower thing. Uh, it's not overly expensive. I pop some air holes in the side to help with the airflow, and both my mealworms and mirworms actually live in there, so there are a few different options out there. Someone also asked how to stop crickets jumping out when you take off the lid. Um, this may happen more if you have tiny baby crickets because those things really really ping like they will just jump everywhere however i do find when the crickets get bigger they actually don't really jump that much or particularly high sometimes they'll jump out because the container they're in is just too small and if you still use the little box that they come in from the pet shop you know those you know the ones that you meant to unpack them from they'll definitely definitely jump out of those the next question is how do you stop food going mouldy? Now as you can see here, there is a piece of pepper and it's gone off, it's gone mushy, so I have to replace it. So when I first get crickets in, I may overestimate how much they're gonna eat. I just figured they haven't probably eaten in a while, so here's loads of food, and then it will probably go a bit, you know, it goes a bit off and you have to take it out. After a while though, you can kind of figure out how much they'll probably eat, so there's none left over to go mouldy. It's a bit of a guessing game, but you kind of get there. Another thing that can cause mould is poor airflow, and that's why I do sort of recommend for the crickets um, a critter keeper like this. I did want to try to put them in one of those sort of storage tubs with holes in the top, and whatever reason, I like there was a lot of holes in the top, but that food went mouldy far, far quicker. A lot of people will also use oats with their mealworms, um, but then they'll put in some food that has a lot of moisture on it, and if there's not enough airflow, not only will the food go mouldy, but so will the oats, and that actually happened to me once. I did a video on that, amazing video. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just basically, figuring out how much your insects will eat to avoid them going moldy and if they do start to go off take them out and replace them. One thing I did find though is mealworms and morrow worms some of them would actually like it when the root vegetables so you know your carrots your parsnips stuff like that would actually really dry out and that's when they'd go and eat it I don't know why but they seem to like it so sometimes the food going off and shriveling up isn't always the worst thing. Just an additional point to this mouldy food uh, tip. If you have a cleanup crew, pop the food in here. I put the old bit of pepper in. <laughs> They're absolutely going crazy for it. So absolutely nothing goes to waste. This kind of ties into a few questions that came up, such as how do you keep the feeder insects alive? How do you care for them? And how do you gut load them? And it's all really the same sort of thing. You have to make sure they have food. And if they have drier food, make sure they have moisture, like bug gel, that's a good thing to use. 
Gut loading is essentially making sure your feeder insect is full of healthy food before they are fed to your reptiles. So this should ensure that they actually live longer until they get eaten, obviously. Um, but I would also like to say it isn't uncommon for things like crickets to just randomly die off. Like even when I'm constantly feeding them, you're going to still get some that are a little bit weak and end up dying off. The other day I actually put a cricket in with Drogo because it's starting to go, but you can tell it's slowing down. Unfortunately though, the cleanup crew got the cricket before Drogo did and they ate it, which was a little bit disturbing. We had a couple questions about mealworms. So someone asked, how do you start breeding them? And someone else asked if you can feed mealworm beetles to your geckos. So the first question, literally you get some beetles, the darkling beetles, they'll do their thing and you'll end up with babies. Ideally separate the beetles from the mealworms and set them up in their own little enclosure. If you leave things in there like a bit of cardboard or even you know the insides of the toilet roll, basically cardboard, they will sometimes lay their eggs on those. You may not be able to see the eggs, you may not even be able to see the babies at first so you'll think nothing has actually worked, but give it time, keep putting food in there and you'll soon start to see babies. Now as for feeding beetles to your geckos, your geckos will probably eat them. I know um, some of mine have in the past. Actually, like sometimes I'll mix mealworms and mealworm pupas and mealworm beetles as part of their meal because I really like to provide a variety. However, what I've read is that the beetles don't have an amazing calcium to phosphorus ratio. So if you feed one or two on the odd occasion, I think that's fine. As I said, variety is key. And leopard geckos would definitely eat a range of beetles in the wild. Um, but don't do that frequently. Don't do that all the time. Don't have that as a main diet. Um, and I'd also probably reserve the beetles for adult geckos rather than babies. The next question is simply crickets versus locusts. So you may have noticed I only really feed brown crickets to my geckos. Like I don't off, like, no, I never really feed locusts. Basically, I find that you get tons of crickets in a pack in comparison to locusts. Like you'll get like 20 locusts or you get 100 crickets. Um, and when you have four mouths to feed, the locusts aren't going to last long. I will say that I did actually try locusts before with my geckos and not one of them was interested, which is surprising because there are a lot of geckos out there that really do love locusts. Um, in terms of which ones are healthiest, I'm going to actually refer back to the Moon Valley Reptile chart. I haven't really found anything similar to this, so this is a sort of my go-to place for figuring out what food is healthy and what's not, and I'll link it below if you want to check it out. But as we can see, a locust has a 1 to 6 calcium phosphorus ratio, 58.3% protein, 24% fat. Uh, crickets have a slightly worse calcium phosphorus ratio at 1 to 9, but they're slightly higher in protein and slightly lower in fat. So I think you could definitely offer either or even both crickets or locusts. It's really up to you. Just brown crickets are my preference and my geckos love them. Talking of what's healthiest, a lot of people did ask which feeder insects are the most nutritious or healthiest for our geckos. So once again, we're going to look at this chart. So phoenix worms, also known as calci worms, seem to be very healthy. I occasionally do get these in for my geckos. The downside to these is they do turn into black soldier flies. I did try to breed them once and all the flies died. <laughs> I had no babies. So, um... That's a downside to those. Uh, silkworms also look to have a good calcium phosphorus ratio. Personally for me though, I find these really difficult to get in the UK. I found one place on the internet that sold about eight worms for a ridiculous amount of money. Um, so unfortunately they're difficult to get unless you bought the eight and bred them. Um, maybe they're easier to get in other places, but they seem to be fairly healthy. It does also look like isopods are really good too, but like all feeder insects, make sure you're feeding captive bred insects. Please don't take any from the outside to feed to your geckos. I'm pretty sure Lyra and Drogo both eat a few of their cleanup crew, which include isopods. And for some reason, I could not find dubia roaches on this list, but from what I've read in the past, they're extremely healthy. I used to have some, I think only Diego would kind of eat them, but he wasn't mad about them. Um, I might try them again in the future, but they do seem to be another healthy feeder insect. 
And the final question I have for today is how does dusting work? So of course it's extremely important to dust your feeder insects. I do have a video that goes into a lot more detail on how to do this so I will link that here and below if you want to check that out. But simply you get either a food bag or a little cup like this, you put the powder in that you're using, you put the insects in that you're going to feed to your geckos. This cup I would recommend more for worms rather than crickets, it's just what I had at the time. But uh, yeah. Once they're all in, shake them about and they're dusted. So I hope this has helped. I had so many questions, but I feel this did cover a lot. As always, if you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye.